What's up guys? Back again today in front of the whiteboard. You know what that means. I'm gonna drop some knowledge on you guys. I've been getting a lot of questions about the cooling system on my car and the cooling system in EcoBoost swap cars in general. So that's what we're gonna be uh, looking at today. Let me draw some stuff up here. This is what I came up with. This is a simplified version that I made from the Focus ST coolant diagram. It's pretty complicated on the, on the Focus ST. There's coolant reservoirs and T's in some of the line, some small uh, plastic tubes that run all over the place. This is what I came up with though. Um, it's quite a bit easier for the swap cars. This is also a little bit Mustang specific because of the, the radiator, um, but past the radiator, everything's pretty universal. So on my car, the lower rad port comes into a port on the side of the block that is directly to the water pump. From there, you'll have two ports on the driver's side of the engine. This one and this one. This port here comes around to the heater core. This port here goes to your coolant housing on the back of the block. The coolant housing at the back of the block We'll have the EcoBoost Mustang, the 2.3 EcoBoost uh, coolant passage. It's a pipe that comes around the side of the engine and gives you your front rad port and also has the return for the heater core. So pretty simplified. Let me show you what it looks like on the car. Um, a little bit more complicated because there's a lot more stuff in the way, but take you through it. So we'll start off in the same place as the uh, drawing on the board, the lower radiator port. Um, Mine has a small adapter in there with a little intermediate hose because I bought the wrong size hose. This is a one and a quarter to one and a quarter hose. You can just go to AutoZone or whatever your local auto parts store is. Pick up one of these. This is one and a half to one and a quarter to adapt to uh, the Fox body. This is a stock Fox body radiator. From there, kind of hard to see, there is a small coolant port it's a plastic housing on the side of the block here. That's where that goes. That heater core hose goes around the back of the block and then over here, let's get this light set up. And that is the left heater hose right here. The right heater hose comes down and just returns back down into the housing for this, which you can see down there. For the turbo coolant routing, we have a barb coming off the bottom of this housing here. Run a line down to, this will be the inside or the block side of the turbo. The other side, which is, find it here. This line here, this is the outside of the turbo. Comes over and back to the block at this fitting right here. These are aftermarket lines for me because of the aftermarket turbo but the stock lines run just the same way. Um, you can just use a hose and hose clamp on this line. That hose sits right about there. That wraps around to the back of your coolant housing, right below the water pump, or the, the fuel pump. There is a hose on this, or a, there's a hose barb on the side there that that goes to. And then all the coolant returns back up here at the end of this line here for your hot return back to the rad. Gets flown through the rad and then back through the system again. With this setup, I fill my coolant through this port here. It's just a quarter inch ratchet, goes down inside there and it is an O-ring seal. So you can see the, the coolant system's still a little bit under pressure which is good, this is holding pressure. Um, but you'll see that that's just a little O-ring seal plug. This will be the highest point in your coolant system. Fill it up from there. That's it, other than the stock reheater cap and overflow line that you can see it doesn't really overflow anything because the engine runs pretty cool with the setup. Just a quick simple video for today. I just wanted to get this out there for the guys that had some questions and get a more realistic view of what is on the car and how to set it up. I will also be working on the car. Unfortunately, it is broken right now because of the fuel tank. I know it sounds weird, 
but the baffle inside of the tank actually broke. I was having some weird issues under full throttle where the uh, the car would almost go into limp mode. Um, it was running out of fuel after data logging. I saw that the fuel rail pressure dropped the whole way down to like 20, 30 PSI. Well, it should be around two or 3,000 PSI. And what's going on with the fuel tank is you can see the sump that sits down inside of here has brackets on both sides that are supposed to be soldered to the bottom of the tank. The solder joints broke on mine and it is just sloshing around wherever it wants. That, unfortunately, this is where the, the fuel pump goes in. That took the fuel pump out and was causing my issue. So now I'm switching over to a full radium spare tire tank setup. And I'll show you guys that. I'll be doing a video on the install of that. I know it's not budget, but this car is uh, slowly getting away from a budget build and more into a kind of crazy build. So look out for that video next. See you guys later.